Hi folks and welcome to Mastering in the Box. In today's video we're going to take a further look inside of Studio One and how we can look at plugin management. Hi folks, Smudge here and welcome to Mastering in the Box. In today's video, it's going to be a brief look into plugin management and how we can start to arrange our plugins in a much more streamlined fashion to get a bit more of an efficient workflow inside of Studio One. But before we get into the content of today's video, if you want to know more about digital mastering, then make sure you hit that subscribe button below and make sure you tick that bell and select all to receive notifications on all of our videos moving forward. And if you want to support the channel, I'll leave links in the description of where you can support the channel through buymeacoffee.com and whether it's just buy me a coffee or a beer, I like both, or whether it's joining the membership scheme, all support will be greatly appreciated and all funds that are raised through buymeacoffee.com are just going to go back into creating even more better content for you. So any support will be greatly appreciated. So plugin management. Certainly not the most glamorous of topics, but this is something that I've been putting off for quite some time. And Nick, one of my good buddies, asked me some time ago, how do I organise my plugins inside of Studio One? And I thought I had it quite good. I had some good subfolders and things like that. Um, but in reality, it was all a bit over the shop. And it's, it's something I've been say, putting off and it's something I really need to address. Why do I need to address this? Well, just by having a good organised structure for your plugins will make things much, much, much easier to know where to go. It'd be much more efficient and streamlined. And in the long run, it will save you some time. Now, inside of Studio One, we are quite spoilt when it comes to plugin management because we have lots of different ways to filter. So the PF5 is our plugin manager and we have splits such as instruments, we have effects, loops, files, cloud, shop, pull, all sorts. Generally, being a mastering engineer, I very much you know, spend most of my time in the effects folder. And there's different ways of looking at effects. So we can look at effects by a flat effect. So this is going to be every single plugin in one long list by A to Z. And then we have the folder, so we can set folders up for our individual plugins we can set them up by vendor so if you want to do it by the manufacturer then you can do it that way or by type so as you can see i have vst2 and vst3s being the fact that i use pc i much prefer using my or well, viewing my plugins in folder format um, for me it just works if i want an eq i know i can go to an eq folder and if i want um, a compressor i know i'll be looking in dynamics that kind of thing and yeah like i say i thought i had this pretty well down pretty nailed down but when you actually start seeing this list we've got a bit of a mixture we've got mastering mastering plugins mixing we've got modulation we've got restoration we've got a couple here which is soundspot which is a vendor we have d16 which is a vendor and then if you look at some of the subfolders the amps amp sims is pretty good to be fair the amps are all in one place and then we've got the cabinet emulators and our pedals i quite like that but it's things like analysis we've got some for loudness meters and then we've got a bit of a hodgepodge about some of these other analysis tools that need tidying up. And the list just goes on. Dynamics, I've got DSs, mastering, gates, and then this list here of all these other dynamic plugins which are just yeah, unsorted. So the plan is just very quickly going to show you how we can make some folders, how we can sort our plugins, and then how we can then start to add some thumbnails to the plugins so you can see some visual references as to what the plugins are. And that's a really, really great feature inside of Studio One. So let's get into it. So recommendation number one is to start with a list of what you want. And it's just some of the quick tips I'm gonna give you here. I've, I've approached this with a way of looking at some aspirational folders that I want. Rather than looking at what's already in Studio One, I mean, some of them are amp sims. I like the way that's set out with amps, cabinets, pedals. But just think about what you want from an ideal perspective. For example, 
I don't want separate mixing, mastering folders. To me, that doesn't really mean anything. If I've got a compressor, I want it in a Dynamics folder. And I want to split Dynamics by DSs, mastering, multiband, bus compressors, multipurpose, and gates. Same with EQs. I don't want a mixing folder and a mastering folder with different EQs in. So I'm going to have one EQ folder with mastering, multipurpose. I'm actually going to split these into analog emulations and non-analog emulations because they all do different things and give you different characteristics and different sounds. So if we can try and split those up as well, if you want to go for something that's got a little bit more analog character to it, great, you've already got a folder for that. If you don't, then you've got a separate folder for that as well. I'm going to streamline some of this as well. So the mastering, I want to delete the mastering folders. I don't need them. Mixing folder, I don't need. Channel strips, for me it was defaulted into mixing. I'm going to give that its own space. So I don't use a lot of channel strips, but when I do, I use it a lot of it for the YouTube videos and for dialogue. So I want to have it give it its own place. And then things like, um, I say, delays and reverbs. Quite an interesting one, because I was originally going to plan, plan to move this in with the modulation, but actually I'm going to give them their own different uh, their own different folders, because I think it just, it just works better that way. Pitch and time doesn't need its own folder, so I'm going to move that into the tools folder. And then things like restoration, I'm going to put that as a subfolder of tools, and just really tidy this up. So first recommendation, make a list of ideals what you want from your plugin folders. Now we've done that, I'm going to go through and start creating these folders. And another top tip here, do not set your plugin thumbnails up at this moment in time. If you set up the plugin thumb thumbnails now, it is an absolute pain to move from the different folders. So just leave it as it is, we can move them in, in bulk, whatever we need to do, and we'll then add the thumbnails in a second. So I'm going to go, go ahead now, set some folders, and I'll come back to you shortly. So I just want to quickly show you how to set up some folders here, because I think that's probably quite a good idea just to show you guys how I do this. And as I said, we've got all these top folders here, and if you say click on a, on a blank piece of the screen here, you can set up a new folder. Let's just type this one as test. If I do that, press enter, and you'll see we've got test or to set, because I can't spell, in this place here. So we delete that. And then what we want to do, if we want to do a subfolder, so for instance, analysis, I know I want a subfolder in the analysis. If I click on analysis, right click, new folder, and I want referencing. So if I then type in referencing, enter, and I've now got a subfolder for referencing. And then to move the plugins into the folder, you literally highlight the plugins that you want, click, drag, done. And they're now in that referencing folder. Simple as that. So let me set up some more folders, and I'll come back to you very soon. Okay, we're done. I now have all of the plugins organized into my preferences. And it's just simple, say amp sims, amps, cabs, pedals, analysis, loudest meters, referencing scopes and meters, and I've split them all down. So my referencing tools, loudest meters, etc. Channel strips, I've got their own separate folder. Delays, dynamics, so we've got bus compressors, DSs, gates, the mastering, I'll split into analogs, non-analogs and limiters then multiband, and then multipurpose by analog and non-analog. So all sorts of goodies in there. And then same with EQ, pretty much. Filters, so mastering is analog and non-analog. Then we've got multipurpose, which is analog and non-analog. Transient designers. And there's a few miscellaneous instrument effects, which I don't use, but kept them tidy. Modulation, reverbs, saturation, and the last one is tools. Probably a bit more of a difficult one, this one, because there's a lot of these kind of odds and sods that go somewhere. So Melodyne, vocal tuning, got some streaming ones, so the audio movers and the rear stream, spatial, so all the panning, splitters, everything like that. And then restoration, some ERX-7 stuff, and just a miscellaneous one here, so like tone generator, um, rear JS, which is a great tool, which I'll come on to in a future video, and bits and bobs like that. So. Now let's get on to adding the thumbnails. So plugging thumbnails. This is probably one of the most underrated features inside the Studio One because it's so blooming handy. I don't know about you, but I have got far too many plugins and sometimes you look at a plugin name and you think, what the hell is that? SHB1, what on earth is SHB1? Well, the plugin thumbnail can really help you out here. And to do it, all you do is click on the plugin drag it into the track and it brings up the the plugin here it's the base 
amp simulation. And if you click on the little arrow next to the name here and go down to update plugin thumbnail, and then generates a plugin thumbnail in the plugin manager on the right hand side. It is so simple, but so useful just to have that visual reference. So at least you can start to identify what some of these plugins are or what they're trying to replicate. Don't try and do it all at one, one go. I'm going to do it just for the purpose of this video. But if you've got hundreds and hundreds of plugins, it will take you a long time to do. Just try and do 10 a day, 15 a day, something like that. And just add them in and update the plugins. And these will save. So once you do it once, you don't have to do it all the time. Um, I've only done this just for the demonstration of this video. But just do a few at a time and you'll find it's much easier to do it that way in the long run. So finally we are done and all of the thumbnails are now up and loaded. So I've got a lovely pretty pictures all through my plugin folders telling me or showing me exactly what all these plugins are. So yeah, and certainly not the most glamorous of tasks, but actually to be fair, now it's been done, it's gonna make it much easier to go where I want to go for what plugins I want to get, uh, and it's gonna make it so much easier and more efficient in the in the long run. So I hope you found this useful. Once again, it's not the most interesting, but it's certainly something that needs to be covered just to show you some of the basics around setting up the your, your plugins. Go through and set your ideals. This is very much geared towards me and my mastering. I know we've got the amp sims and things like that, but it's very much geared towards some of the things that I need on a regular basis and how I would approach it. But set it up in a way that's going to make it comfortable for you and make it easier and efficient for you to get the plugins you want. Break down things bit by bit, and when it comes to the plugin thumbnails, just do little by little. Don't do it all in one go because you will uh, very quickly lose the will to live. So I hope you found it useful. If you want to know more about digital mastering and how I use Studio One in the mastering, then make sure you hit that subscribe button below and make sure you tick that bell and select all to receive notifications and all of our videos moving forward. And if you do want to support the channel, there'll be links in the description of where you can support the channel through buymeacoffee.com. So once again, any money raised through buymeacoffee.com is just going to go back towards um, mastering the box, buying gear and plugins and other bits and bobs that will make the channel and the content even better for you guys so thanks for watching and all that's left for me to say is i hope you'll keep safe and well and i'll see you in the next video coming real soon